We got epoxy garage floor we're doing today, 800 square feet, three bay garage. We got it all prepped, came in a day before, got it all ground, patched up whatever we needed to patch. There's a few little cracks, a few little pop outs. And now we're ready to put the coating down. We got it all laid out there, got the flake and the buckets right there, ready to go. So next step, roll out base coat, broadcast the flake, then we'll wait for that to dry, scrape it, top coat it. Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So when I say in the title, you know, don't try this at home unless, it's because I want, really want you guys to know that this isn't, this product putting down an epoxy garage floor coating isn't just something you buy off the shelf, go home and clean your garage floor and roll on the epoxy. It's just, it doesn't work that way. It's going to fail. 100% of the time it's going to fail. We grind off so much of, uh, people's epoxy floors that they just buy off the shelf at a big box store they think they can go home and just roll it on and then you know in a week in a month in a year it's all peeling off and then they just want it to look nice again so they hire us to come in and do it now we do a ton of these garage floors my company days concrete floors specializes in putting these epoxy coatings down on garage floors so we do a lot of them in a year's time just like this one you know, older garages, newer garages, garages that need repair. So there's a, you know, there's a few things you need to know before you just go start rolling on the, the epoxy. And the, number one is the prep. You gotta be able to know how to prep the concrete. And using acid, an acid wash to prep the concrete just won't work. It won't work if you're driving cars in there. You know, maybe for foot traffic it will, but the hot tires in the summer when you drive a car in there are just going to pull that epoxy right up off the concrete because it's it the the acid etching doesn't create a good enough surface profile for the epoxy to bond to so you really need to grind the concrete to get the right surface profile number one and then what about fixing the cracks and the spalling and the pop outs and the divots and the chips i mean you really need to know how to fix that stuff so they don't just show through and, and you don't want to just leave them and, and epoxy over them because then your floor's not going to look very good so the repair is a, is a really big deal if you want your floor to look really nice the next thing really is you know you also need to know if your floor has moisture problems and so how do you check for that you got to know how to check for that because if you got moisture coming up through your floor then your epoxy is just going to bubble and peel off too that the pressure from the moisture vapor coming up through the concrete will just peel this stuff right off and then you know you'll be wondering well what happened I thought I did everything right well you maybe you did but you got moisture problems and you got to remedy that first so anyway let's move on to the epoxy now now when you put an epoxy coating on like this like we're doing right here you've got to make sure you're using the right product you can't just use like a 50% solids product you get off the off the shelf at a big box store. What that means is when something says like 50% solids, that means the other part of the product is the carrier that helps make it easier to roll on. So when you roll it on, when the carrier evaporates, whether it's a water-based or solvent-based, then all you're left with is 50% of the product that you rolled on. So you really want to be using something that's, you know, in the 90% solids or even 100% solids, which, which those people aren't going to tell you because they don't know. So, and then, you, you, you know, after that, after you figured all that out, you want to make sure that you're putting this stuff down right, rolling it out, uh, the correct square footage, getting it the, the correct thicknesses, and then broadcasting the flakes in it the right way to make it look really nice. So that's what we do, and and that's I even teach that. You know, I got a course to do exactly what we're doing right here in this video. There's a link for it down in the description if you want to learn how to do that. If you want to do your own garage floor, 
you'll learn all the proper steps you'll learn the right product to use how to do this how to do that it's all covered in the video matter of fact I have I have job studies just like this one well where I uh, have trainings going over a job site just like this if your floor is in this shape this is what you do if, if your floor is brand new this is what you do so I'll, I'll teach you how to do it right so you won't have a failure at least to the best of my ability and you know we do a we do a bunch of these every single year and have really really good luck with the system we use with the products we use and with the way we do it and that's how it that's how it is right there so right now you know we, we were rolling on the base coat we measure that out so it gets on at the right thickness now I'm, I'm doing what's called a full broadcast we like the full broadcast flakes we don't like just the sprinkle in flakes so that's after the the flakes have been broadcast now we're gonna wait for the base coat to dry up we use a real fast setting one so we can get everything done in a day so this is about an hour an hour and a half after we get done broadcasting the flakes the base coats all set up we actually use a product it's a polyaspartic and polyaspartics are actually a little bit better than epoxies as far as coatings go especially for garage floors and being out in the sun like this so this is this is what we're doing we're scraping the flakes right now this is part of the process of before you put the top coat on so we got the base coat all down got the flake in it it's been a couple hours so we got it all scraped we scrape it both ways, north, south, east, and west, and then we take all the excess flake and we put it back. We can reuse that. So now we just got to get it vacuumed and get any loose flakes up, clean off the surface here, and then we'll be ready to put the top coat on. Quite a little bit to go on. There's a lot of edges, a lot of edges on this one to cut. Uh, with two vacuums it doesn't take very long this is a big vacuum so that one that one uh, sucks them up pretty fast but we got to get all that stuff from the edges where I threw the, the flake on we got to make sure all the edges are nice and clean and we'll get ready to top coat You know, I feel like one of the main keys of really making these floors last for years and years and years is putting down the right top coat. Um, we use one that works really, really good. So I'll, you know, in the course, I'll let you know what that, that is, guys. But you got to put it down at the right thickness. Number one, we use a polyaspartic, and it's, it's very scratch resistant, very chemical resistant. It's UV resistant. Which, you know, if you just put epoxy down and the sun hits it, epoxy is going to yellow in the sun. And no one's going to tell you that at a big box store. So having a polyaspartic uh, top coat is just going to make your floor look really, really nice for years and years and years. And it's going to, it's really going to wear very, it's going to wear like iron. So that's why we use it. And it really makes the colors pop in the flake. And there's a, you know, you got to know how to roll this stuff down too. So we put top coat down at 130 square feet a gallon. We got it measured out right there. So there's our tape. So we, we measure out we measure out each section 130 square feet and we put a piece of tape and that's where we try to drag each kit to. So we know we got the right thickness. And we'll we'll get pretty close to that on every single kit. You know when we do this for us what makes it nice is having three of us here is 
Darren usually does the mixing, so he he takes control of of mixing the product, making sure it's mixed properly. That's that's really important, mixing that stuff properly. You know the ratios, how long you mix it, and then he gets it dumped on the floor. And then one of us, Luke's right now rolling out with the 18, and I'm cutting in the edges. One of us usually either does the 18, and then one of us does the edges like that. So it, it keeps the process rolling on. And if if you're thinking of doing this yourself with no help, I mean, I you are, you are going to struggle. I mean, we could do it by yourself, but it's going to be a lot of work, especially if you have a lot of cutting in like this. If you don't have a lot of cutting in on the edges, if you can just roll the edges with like a four inch roller, then that's going to be a lot faster. But this product does set too. So, I mean, you only have a certain amount of time to work with it before it starts getting tacky. So you really need to know, you know, the, the, the characteristics of how your product works, how it sets, how much time you got. And that's just really important whenever you're doing any type of coating like this. And there's a proper way that we roll it out too. We don't just, you know, dump it on the ground and roll it and yep, that looks pretty good. We have a system of, of, of we go over it multiple times uh, just to make sure it's spread really nice and evenly and there's no puddles, there's no, we don't miss anything, there's no roller lines. So if you, you know, I just want you guys to make sure that if, if, if you're doing this at home, you know, don't do this at home unless. That's what the, the thumbnail said. I want to make sure you know all the proper steps. I mean, you can go on YouTube and watch these videos like this and get a pretty good idea. But who's really teaching you the, the proper steps from A to Z? You know, step, step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. Just to make sure that you have all the information you need. So that's why I'm putting these videos out. That's why I'm kind of warning you as what not to do. Don't think it's quite as easy as it looks. It does look pretty easy. But again, if, if you really want to do this and, and know what you're doing, you can, you can take my video, you can take my course, you have access to me in the course. So you can call me, we can talk, we could email, we could text, whatever you need for information. Go over your specific project, your floor, talk about it, how to attack it, and then go from there. So. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.